Welcome back, gang, to another episode of the Dark Horse Dental Success Pod. This is episode 21, Blackjack, and you have uh, with you today Jim and Dan from CareStack uh, joining me to talk about their wonderful uh, natively cloud-based practice management software. Say that 10 times fast, but you know this is kind of something we have really been dying for in the dental industry is... Uh, something that's not a tired dental software that has been around for 20 years. Um, CareStack just, you know, like the Kool-Aid man, kicked down the door, uh, <laughs> bust a hole through a wall. They're here and it, it's great stuff. So um, Jim and Dan, why don't you like describe to the audience, like how you guys got started with, with CareStack and kind of what the company looks like, you know, right now in 2021. Yeah. You know, Jim, I'll go first. Be okay with that. So Ruben, my background was in IT, much like you, specific to dentistry. I met the co-founder of CareStack, Abhi Krishna, back in 2017, right around when they were going commercial, and was a, one of their very early partners in referring people over to CareStack as a solution to better manage their you know, multiple locations, or if they were just frustrated with having to subscribe to five different softwares to make their practice modern and functional in that time frame. And... Uh, yeah, that's how I landed at CareStack. And going into 2021, we're just continuing to build on the success and the growth that we've seen, um, you know, being over 1,100 practices right now and continuing to help practices, you know, free themselves from having to subscribe to so many different softwares to run their business. Jim, I'll let you take it away and give your background and where you see CareStack going in 2021. Sure, sure. So, so Ruben and the audience, thank you for this opportunity to... Uh, chat with you today. Um, I guess my route was a little bit more circuitous than Dan's. Um, I've been in the dental space, Ruben, at that time that I joined CareStack almost three years ago in 2018. I had been in the industry like 16 years. Uh, I had taken a little bit of a break. I got a little bit burned out. I, I left the, the dental space. But what kind of attracted me to CareStack um, was this mission to really um, change the way dentists consume technology and away from this fragmented approach like Dan spoke about of having multiple software subscriptions, right? And then running this closet full of mysterious technology they weren't really comfortable with. I thought that was, I was really kind of intrigued by that and the passion and vision. Yeah, uh, Jim, that's why we put a door on that closet so they don't have to go. think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that approach. So, so that's kind of what drew me to CareSac and also, I. You know, it, I was drawn by the energy, the freneticism of working for a startup. I mean, we were a nascent company back then. Um, where we are today, I mean, fast forward from 2018, where we were in a dozen, a, you know, a couple dozen practices of early adopters. And here we are, like Dan mentioned, um, you know, north of a thousand practices using the software. Wow. wow. It was an arduous trip. It's been, a, it's been really exciting. There's no, no two days are alike here at the company. Um, which is a good thing, but some days you just kind of want to have a chance to catch your breath and it's really hard to do that. So that's, that's kind of where the company looks like in 2021. Our team is over 300 employees wide. We're on two continents. We're here in the U.S. and also in India where engineering and architecture and development occurs. Um, and that's kind of where we are. So yeah, thanks for that question. Appreciate it. Yeah, no, it's funny. I got, I think both of you are out of office the other day and it was like one of those things I just didn't feel like you guys would ever go on vacation. So it kind of caught me off guard that you were unavailable. <laughs> that, that was probably because of smiles at sea. I was trying to be so into that moment when you're surrounded by all of those like yeah. motivational speakers, yeah. you got to live in the moment, Ruben. So of course, Jim wasn't actually on vacation. He was just working harder at a conference. Exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so just, why am I not surprised? So you guys said you're in over a thousand practices right now. You know, what has your, your growth been like? Like what, what did it look like 2019, even last year? Dan, do you, why don't you tackle this, Dan, if you want to speak to that. Yeah. So in 2019, I mean, we had some solid growth. I mean, I know we probably onboarded over, I think we doubled the size of the company roughly in that span of time it was a really successful year. Just continued on into 2020 as far as really getting traction in the space. Um, Jim's done a tremendous job as far as getting CareStack in front of a lot of partner partners in the, in the industry and as well as some influencers. Like he said, he was at Smiles at Sea 
you know, getting out there to have ambassadors of care stack, right. To talk about it amongst the people that are the, within their following. And then our inside sales team, which is under me in Minnesota has that inbound traffic that they're bringing on. And we have a really solid implementation team that's refined the process of bringing these offices on board in an efficient fashion and in a timely uh, manner during that span of time. Now, I know I dumped a lot out there, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's kind of the growth that we've seen. And it really is just a, a team effort. That's what we view at CareStack. Yeah. It takes the, the whole team from our product team all the way over um, to implementations to make mm -hmm. it successful in that journey. Yeah, props to you guys. I mean, you guys had that feature uh, that I, I ended up learning about last year called curbside check-in, just like right at the, you know, right time, right with with the global pandemic hitting us, and when when offices were opening, just having your software ready to have, um, you know, patients be able to hang out in their cars until and you know limit exposure in office until that room was ready, and so they could update their forms and do everything um, without really having to worry about getting COVID. So that, that was a really great feature and kind of one of the entry points for, for you and, and I uh, working with each other. And when we did our first yes. webinar. Um, so, you know, I know Dan, you talked about, you know, how you met Abby back in, in 2017, like what, what did he emote in terms of like, what is the founding, <clears throat> excuse me, what's the founding mission of CareStack, right? Like, what do you, you know, you mentioned like there, there's, the, the traditional model is a server-based practice management software and then throw five integrations in there, right? right. You need to bolt on paperless analytics and scheduling and all this stuff. And all of a sudden your bill is $5,000 a month. Uh, I joke a little bit, but not that much. Um, you gotta take, what are the founding kind of principles of CareStack? Yeah, I, I would say the first one is really to bring like an enterprise experience for the single shingle dentist to the multi-location group, the merging group, but give them the access to technology that's been limited to the really large organizations only in dentistry, right? Um, you know, you might hear Abby say we, he wants to democratize dentistry. And I, I think it's giving the access to these tools though, to people that have been on the periphery and haven't been able to have either the buying power or the technical savvy or the bandwidth to really make that decision. I'm going to give this a shot and go with it, right? So that was really one of the founding visions of the company. And then also, I know this is so cliche, Ruben, and every company might say it, but we really believe it. It's part of our credo, is to be client focused in the sense of the software only gets better with the input of our clients. And the care stack that Dan and I are gonna have tomorrow is gonna be better than the care stack that Dan and I have today. So like we're continually upgrading and, and sending new releases. Now there's a, there's a right cadence, right? When we were a young company in nascent, Dan, we probably had to upgrade what every two weeks. Yeah, that's probably about right, Jim. And it was way too frequent and overwhelming, even though you just log in. It's not like you have to go download any software like you do with a traditional on-premise solution. But we found kind of we struck the right balance there where we're not, you know, making changes overnight or every two weeks. But the product has to get better. And you alluded to the change with the curbside check-in. Our clients told us as they reopened that patients also wanted to have the ability at the last minute to have a virtual appointment and not on site. So we built inbuilt teledentistry into the platform. It's not an additional fee. They don't leave the platform. Another example would be contactless payments. Our practices said patients wanna bypass the common credit card terminal. The perception is that's where the germs reside, right? So we allowed contactless yeah. payments to happen via text. It always blew my mind, right? You go to the grocery store, Right. And everything, everyone's masked up, everything's sanitized. However, you have to take your credit card out and put it in the same slot <laughs> that everyone else's credit card just touched and then touch it and put you back in your wallet. It's like, what are we Defeated doing the here? whole process? Right? I know it's amazing. <laughs> it's like, we're going to try to do everything except for this last piece. Um, sorry, sorry, Jim. I no, no, that, I, that's, you know, well put, well put. Um, so one just observation, it is the year 2021. Um, this is not meant to be a hard question. Why aren't all dental softwares cloud-based? Go for it, Dan. <laughs> yeah, I would say, um, you know, Henry Schein and, and Patterson might have something to do with that, wanting people just to control that space and maybe the fear of change. And they're, they're, they're not offering 
a viable solution that the, that the market feels is a, a good replacement to that current on-premise solution that they're running through Eaglesoft or Dentrix. Um, I mean, and you put it pretty well, Ruben. I, I don't, I don't know. I wish I had that answer to that question, but like you said, that's a 20 plus year product that they're running in most cases. And like Jim said, back to our founding mission of wanting to bring these individual offices into a space where their peers like uh, Aspen and Midwest and smile brands have the resources and the money to go and build their own thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the idea behind CareStack is to level that playing field, you know, to deliver at a reasonable cost, a tool that can do all of those components in one, right? Why they all haven't moved. I'm, I'm guessing maybe because that software is owned by companies that aren't software companies, to be frank, right? They, they sell supplies like gloves and cotton balls and the like, right? Mm -hmm. well, what are your thoughts there? I think it's a little, you know, clutching the pearl e. Um, okay. You know, you have seen Dentrix and Eaglesoft release their successors that it will eventually, um, but they've both done a terrible job of implementation. So, not a lot of adoption. I mean, when when I think about, we work for 720 dental offices right today. Uh, what percentage of those are cloud? At most, four, maybe three. Um, so it is, you know, you guys are up against the, the battle of startups aside, right? Because startups is a very easy, you know, from scratch, let's get it done. Right. But you guys have the mission of having to get not only the doctor, but the hygienist who feels empowered, right? The office manager who feels empowered. Um, it even, like, I've even seen, like, the, the spouse have an opinion on it who doesn't even work in the practice. Um, so I don't know really if this is a question or more of me just uh, sympathizing with you a little bit in the process, <laughs> but the mission that you guys have taken out is a very important one, right? It has cybersecurity ramifications. It has huge efficiency ramifications with, with these offices and how they can function. And also just being a modern practice, like don't you want to run a practice where you get to use the best tools and, and you have you know patients in their 20s and 30s that are like, wow, okay, they have they have their stuff together, you know? Um, I, I'm with you, Dan. I don't have a solid answer to it, but, you know, my, my guess is that they are making enough money doing what they're doing. So there's not a huge incentive to do it. Um, that's, that's usually when you see disruption yeah. not happening from within is like, well, if we just kept doing this long, maybe no one will notice and we can just keep sure. the, yeah. right. the gravy train. Or keep the here. revenue coming in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what other thing that that's you know a, a critique of those softwares is they are really really closed environments. So it's like you know it, the reason you know people go with Open Dental cost aside is there's like you know there's a thousand integrations out there and that that's one of their main selling points. Um, on the other side of that, cloud softwares are known for ve being very closed ecosystems. But you guys are kind of the rare combo of you are a cloud-based practice management software, but you're also, you know, letting in, the, you know, the mango voices, right, of the world, the, the integrators to come in and pull into your platform. So how did that decision come about to say, hey, you know, we're going to do this a little bit differently? Well, I think it's Jim, a you want to speak to that? Yeah, yeah sure. It. I think it's a balancing act, Ruben, because we, we, we are an all-in-one, right? And that's really critical for your audience to know. We want to make it simpler. We don't want to have you displace one solution for patient texting with another third-party solution that's just integrated into CareStack. <clears throat> we want to deliver that through our through our platform, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but where it makes sense in the case of like Mango Voice as a great example, we don't have aspirations to be a phone company, um, but we know that phone is very important, and especially in dental offices, the office manager wants to have that screen pop, right? They want to see the patient's name before it rings in the office. They wanna be able to launch into the chart, right? And, or into the ledger. And so, we, and so we have to pursue integrations where they make sense, mm -hmm. but striking that balance and understanding that we don't wanna, you know, all of a sudden become another bolt on, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and offer, you know, I, I liken it to the subscription model of streaming services. At what, what's the breaking point for a consumer right now, right? Between Apple TV, Peacock, Disney Plus, you know, ESPN plus the list goes on and on, right? So mm -hmm. there is that breaking point. So we we want to strike that right balance if that makes sense. 
Yeah, no, that makes sense. And, and that's one of the topics you just mentioned is one of my diatribes that sometimes I go on is, all right, we had Spectrum subscription and we had 1700 channels. And now the grand vision is everything a la carte. Well, to get what you really need, you need 1700 apps. <laughs> we're just going right back to where we came from. Right? Oh, we're just paying all the people directly. It's, it, it's crazy. Um, so I guess take for, you know, there's going to be some people listening that already have care stack and, you know, they're feeling the love and having a great time with you guys. What kind of goodies do you guys have coming down the pipeline? Um, and this could be useful to both people that have it and don't have it. Um, what are you guys working on right now that you can speak on? Dan, I'll defer to you on this. Go for it, please. Yeah, Jim, I don't, I don't know how far we want to go into this. I mean, the, there's a lot of stuff on the roadmap and a lot of what's happening inside of CareStack is, you know, making even some of the existing better, right? I mean, like the Mango Voice is a great one. You know, Jim brought that to our development team because there, there was a big following with, uh, you know, the Nifty Thrifty Dentist that uses Mango Voice. We have a pretty big presence in there. And they wanted that integration because like Jim was saying, they want that pop up, you know, continuing to improve upon how we manage payment plans directly inside of our platform, right? Making that better to where we can auto update credit cards when we find that they're expired or a card made number may have changed. So it makes it totally seamless on that, you know, consumer side, right? Just one less thing to have to update. I mean, you probably put it best, Ruben, right? You got away from Spectrum with 17. So now when your card changes and now you've subscribed to all those individually, <laughs> it's a nightmare it's terrible so we want to take that yeah. off their plate um some other pieces around potentially maybe having a finance option mm -hmm. inside a care stack directly mm -hmm. where there could be some pre-qualification for patients before they come in for their treatment and just continuing to deliver a more patient-centric mm -hmm. experience as they're coming into the practice you know that's building upon what we already have with payment plans you know all their forms and treatment plans they can sign from their own portal, right? Like you mm -hmm. said, nobody wants to touch that shared device anymore. Why do it like that credit card terminal? We can push it all to their own portal. Um, those are a few items from a high level. I'm sure there's a lot more exciting stuff coming down. Um, that's you know a couple that come off the top of my head. How about you, Jim? Is there anything that you've? Yeah, yeah, Dan. The only thing I, think I would I'd probably add to that is is just continually improving the dashboard and the insights elements mm -hmm. of the reporting module, mm -hmm. um, you know, giving people actionable data. And Dan does a great job of, of emphasizing this, right? If we find out about a report on something that's going wrong after the fact, we really can't do much to address it. So having the dashboards identify trends ahead of time mm -hmm. so that they're upstream from the problem, that's really the, one of the key elements of CareStack. So I think we're, I think we're, the dashboards are continually being updated to improve that. Also something that we're always working hard on is to, you know, with, um, the insurance protocols for increasing the first pass <clears throat> acceptance rate. Like what can we do from a technology standpoint to minimize and to get ahead of all our other competitors so that when you submit a claim in CareStack, um, we're making sure that it, it exits the software with all the questions answered. And that way you get a higher acceptance rate and you get paid quicker as a clinician. So yep. those are some of the longer range kind of ongoing continual improvement um, processes that are going on within the platform. Yeah, I think as much as you guys can attack time savings, I know, Dan, you were talking about pre-qualification, right? You know, before the patient comes in the door, having that information um, and, you know, touchless points obviously is, is another big thing. Um, but also it's almost like gamification is now becoming big, even in, in business. You think about, you know, I wear an Apple watch and I have now, oh my God, for like six years, I think about this and like, that is what says, oh, I need to stand up right now. Right. Or, it, it, but scaled down to a dental office or scaled up, what percentage of my patients uh, have said insurance? How many new patients do I have this month? Like just having that at a dashboard view, just um, it, it kind of makes it feel like Robin Hood, right? It makes it feel like an app in that way. Um, yes. I, I uh, some information I've collected, you know, I work with a lot of startups and we, we use a lot of different tools to replicate um, what I'm going to throw at you guys here in a second. Um, ideas for development that I, I see a lot of people, the first one is, having a welcome to the practice 
uh, screen available, right? What I mean by that is, uh, you know, this the office did such a great job at, you know, selling the experience. They scheduled them in CareStack. They brought them into the chair. They have this beautiful six o'clock TV, some sort of button you can click in CareStack that says, you know, welcome to Brilliant Smiles, Brenda, right? And just, you know, having that very personalized experience. Um, so that's something right now people do in PowerPoint. They have a, a PowerPoint presentation. Oh. And they edit that for each patient. Um, and then the, the second idea I hear is there's not a lot of great patient education solutions. Um, the homeless, not, I don't know if any that are integrated. So we see uh, something like a channel D that's just like, you know, standalone or, you know, Casey with patterns standalone. But what I hear a lot of feedback on is, hey, I, I've worked up this beautiful treatment plan. And if there was a way... Uh, maybe I'm not the best orator or best salesperson coming from the dentist point of view. If there's a way I can show them in a, in a, in a quick video, if that were somehow, uh, you know, a part of care. Like, anyway, okay. just stuff that yeah. would add, add value. No, that's really good feedback. You know, and I know that, you know, our founders and our CEO will be watching this podcast and listening, Dan. So that's a good takeaway for them. It, it is a good takeaway. And Jim, I, I want to jump in here for just a moment because you've actually started developing and expanding upon our CareStack University. And I think that kind of plays into what Ruben was saying. We're bringing in some thought leaders that are not only going to be able to just teach people how to use CareStack, but like what Ruben was saying, help them be better at presenting a treatment plan coming from right. one of their peers, right? right? In the space that'll now be presented inside of our own university to not just teach them how to use the software, but how to present that treatment plan. So maybe there's rest, right. less reliance upon Again, mm -hmm. we want to pull them away from that third-party application. You can do it on your own, right? Maybe right. you just need that little bit of coaching. So don't sell yourself short, Jim. We, we have that. <laughs> yeah. That's your brainchild. Hey, yeah, thank just, you for just, that. hey our... just spitballing here at, at features that uh, – these are the ones that end up making, like, the forums and the Instagram posts and, you know, all that mm -hmm. stuff. So if you can make their life easier in that way, these are like wow, like wow features that, that are really, you know, could help sell CareStack. Um, so, you know, we kind of talked about how, how COVID kind of reshaped how offices were approaching software with like curbside check-in and contactless payments. Are there any other trends you have seen Guys, you know, you've been in, the, in this industry a long time. You know, what trends have you seen kind of over the last few years? And if you could kind of describe that. Sure. A little bit. So I think uh, like one of them that came out of the lockdown was the centralization um, for, you know, emerging groups or, or established groups, right? Bringing people the ability to schedule, to manage the billing and insurance process from a central location and, and not have maybe people exposed in a clinical situation or do that work from home, right? So you talk about the benefits of the cloud. We all know that you can remote in, right? Via like log me in or something of that nature, but it's so much easier when you can go into a cloud-based software in a browser and be in any of your locations, no matter how disparate they are. So we definitely saw that as a, as a trend coming out of the lockdown is moving the back office actually out of the office and into someone's home or maybe into like a central, just an office building somewhere away from the clinical activity, giving the clinical team more space, more social distancing. So I think that was certainly one trend. Um, Dan, if you want to talk about some of the consumer trends that we saw or how people were use, interacting with CareSec, I think that would be great. Yeah, yeah, I'll jump into that, Jim. I know like a big piece to build on like what you were saying, even outsourcing that you know billing solution. I, I think the last five offices I've signed on, the, there's no billing person, right? It's been a big trend for the individual office. And when we look at the consumer side of this, I mean, what was it? Even pre-COVID, most of the numbers were right around 67% of consumers want to be able to book their own appointment online and manage that themselves. Um, another big piece that we see trend-wise is... You mean people don't want to talk to other people? <laughs> <laughs> that is a guarantee. Right. I, oh, I, yeah. I think they do. They just don't want to talk to them and go through your calendar, right? Yeah. There's nothing more frustrating than that, Ruben, where you're both sure. going back sure. and forth. No, that doesn't work. This doesn't yeah. work. 15 minutes later, you mm -hmm. land on the time that works. Um, <laughs> I think they want to have a meaningful conversation. And the next piece mm -hmm. was kind of go building into that meaningful conversation is price transparency. That is huge in the medical space. Whether we're talking about you know 
a, a dental office or anybody else in the med medical mid medical space is walking in knowing what they're going to pay that day. And that's mm-hmm. another one of the things that's at, to the core of care stack is delivering that number. So that way the staff is prepared to talk to the office or to the patient in the office about what that treatment's going to cost them and give them all the alerts as to why we got to that price. If there's some type of limitation according to their insurance, they can speak to it. And the patient appreciates that knowing, okay, great, Ruben, it's going to be $1,200 today because you used up X, Y, and Z benefits. You're probably going to be fine with that versus getting the mystery bill, right? <laughs> um, so that's a big one. That's what we're, we're passionate about. Um, and that's, you know, again, go into the data, what consumers want, that's going to benefit the dental office if we, you know, deliver what they're expecting. And get away from the dirty clipboard, right? No, that's the thing I can't yeah. do. Like, no one wants to do the clipboard full with, forms. With, with, the sharp, with the Sharpie pen? Right, for right. Check-in? So if there's any kind of silver lining, and they're, and I and again, I don't think they're, I, I don't want to be one of these people saying what's good coming out of this is very little, but one of the things that's been kind of transformational in dental is people getting comfortable with the self-service component, right? Releasing the the... The gorilla grips, Ruben, from like owning the whole onboarding experience in the <laughs> office and empowering the consumer to do it on their own. It's happened in medicine. I mean, I can't go to see my primary care physician without going on the portal and completing my intake form. Why is it taking dentistry so long to get there? Hey, Jim, my favorite yeah. is, oh, our patients are too old, right? Yeah, I, I've heard that a lot. And then I talk to my dad who's 76 and he fills out his forms for his medical. And then he's telling me about the clipboard at the dental office. I'm like, they just didn't give it to them. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, like, it, it, just don't give people a choice. Yeah. <laughs> right. And they will figure it out. You know, absolutely. If, if someone is way more comfortable with a piece of paper, but if they don't have the option to do that, you know, they're going to have to download that app just like they did last night to play Candy Crush. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right? and, and they managed to sign up for that. Um, yep. <laughs> so, you know, I have taken two of the most important people uh, from CareStack away for this podcast. So uh, guys, I really appreciate you spending time on here and, and you know, giving our listeners a you know, grand tour of CareStack and ha- you know, what you guys are setting out to do in the dental industry. Uh, how does someone um, you know, reach out that is, is evaluating CareStack? How do they you know, get a hold of you, schedule a demo, do all that good stuff? I would say there's two places to go. I'd say either join our Facebook group called um, CareStack Champions, which is open to the public. Um, that's a good place to join. And, and, make, and that's where you're going to learn all about what's new at CareStack and what's going on. And then um, you can obviously dialogue directly with Dan and I from Facebook. We're not behind some curtain somewhere or on some throne. Oh, in you're, a white in front castle. Of, you're in front of a curtain by the looks in of it. In front of a curtain, literally, <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> Or, or Ruben, I think going to our website and quickly request a demo and then mention when you, when you fill out the form, just mention that you heard us on the podcast. That, that way we have some contacts, well, yeah. contacts, excuse me, when we pick up and where we left off. So carestack.com, book a demo. And then in the other field, don't put other. <laughs> and during, maybe podcast, heard you guys on the podcast. Ruben's yeah. a handsome guy. He wants me to get on and get a demo. Dan, anything you <laughs> want to add to that? No, I, I think those are great avenues, Jim. Great ways yeah. to get in touch with it. And then our team will yeah. hop on and figure out if there's something there with you with CareStack during a live demo. Yeah, that's awesome, guys. I, I look forward to seeing the continued success and growth of the company. And uh, obviously, we have a lot of mutual customers we work with. So, um, you know, our team and your team has a very close relationship. We've had a great time working with you guys. Just, you know, versus the, you know, the Dentrix and the pattern, like the old guard, right? It's just so nice for some like youthful blood uh, in the industry or people that like actually care about making a name for themselves. Because that's like, you know, I started this company 10 years ago. Uh, unbelievable. I like get up and I'm ready to go still every single morning. That's I'm awesome. just ready to kick that's butt. Fantastic. So um, whenever thank I- thank you for calling me youthful, by the way. I don't think that's happening. I know. I really appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> it's happened in some time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think great. you met the company, Jim, not us. Uh, yes, I, yes. I was thinking that same thing too. Mm. Like, does he really mean me? All right. I was just gonna let him, I was just gonna <laughs> let him have it. You know. That's awesome. But hey guys, thanks for coming on. All right. Thanks, Ruben. Ruben, thank you so much. I appreciate your listeners' time. Thank you. Got it.